the next uh, report uh, will make Ilka Bonfield and Humberto Rodriguez. Are you here? Yes. Please. Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right on. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm going uh, to present uh, the paper called Generation of Cell Motion Manifolds of a Functionally Redundant Robot Using Multi-Objective Optimization. Uh, I'm Humberto Rodriguez uh, from the Technological University of Panama Mechanical Engineering Department. This is uh, Panama, Central America. Rodriguez. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, it's visible. Uh, repeat, please, your question. Can you see my presentation? Uh, uh, we see your presentation, please. OK. Yeah. OK, this, has a, this is the content of the presentation, uh, the problem statement, contribution, kinematic cell motion manifolds, uh, and so forth. So um, the this problem is that uh, even though the, the redundancy is an old issue, uh, the task-based redundancy is a mi misunderstood problem. And uh, recently, uh, some authors uh, have decided not to call it a, a redundancy condition, but a robotic structure um, with unconstrained workspace co coordinates. Um, existing methods of exploiting redundancy in the velocity domain based on the Jacobian are based on the characteristic of the intrinsic, intrinsic redundancy. Um, the the uh, Algo al genetic algorithms and non-dominated uh, uh, sorting algorithm heuristic methods based on the Pareto front use uh, for functional redundancy uh, results in uh, they results in a discontinuous Pareto optimal fronts, but uh, we are still considering the in this uh, work. The question is: uh, Is it possible to meta heuristic to use meta heuristics to define a methodology that allows the knowledge of the auto motion or self motion spaces of the structure in the uh, in the functional redundancy in the for the case of functional redundancy? Well, the contribution is a methodology that we present here that allows the approximate definition of the self motion manifolds for a given manipulator trajectory using the property of the functional redundant robot and the characteristic of the search method. Well, uh, first some basic definitions. Um, uh, as you know, the number of solutions of the inverse kinematics of a manipulator is not unique, but finite. The manipulator is said to have multiple solutions. If the dimension of the configuration space, uh, the C space, is greater than the dimension of the operation space, then the robot is intrinsically redundant. Um, if the task uh, is completely contained by, by uh, contained by and has a lower dimensionality uh, than the operating operation space, the, the manipulator is said to be functional redundant. And this is the case that uh, we are dealing uh, with in this presentation. First, uh, there's a, a clear uh, way in which the the the, the two uh, spaces relate in, in both for the functional redundancy um, and for the intrinsic uh, redundancy in, in the left uh, the left side you have the the way that in which uh, the these spaces relate say for the function redundancy and, and on the right uh, for the intrinsic intrinsically redundant uh, systems for the functional redundancy, local inverse mapping is from one pose to one configuration. 
and there are infinite solutions in the uh, operation, operation space. For intrinsic re redundancy, with a, uh, with a local inverse mapping from one pose to infinite configurations, and also it has infinite solutions in the C space. In both cases, uh, the both cases present a set of solutions, uh, we call it branches on C space. However, however based on the multi-objectives optimization, it is more probable that the intrinsic redundancy case presents a larger, larger uh, diversity, um, uh, which in turn uh, is related to the flexibility of the system. So um, let's uh, investigate a basic case. Uh, this is the, the case of a 3R manipulator, a uh, three, three degree of freedom, all, uh, it's a planar manipulator. Uh, uh, all the three joints are uh, revolute joints. And on the, on the right, you can see um, the graph for the points on the trajectory uh, of the N effector of these robots. And uh, here, um, we, the, the, the redundancy, the, the functional redundancy comes from the fact that only the position of the N effector is constrained. Is constrained. The orientation of the uh, final link is not uh, fixed. It's not uh, pre-established, so it's free. It's uh, it's unconstrained. So when uh, you, you can move, uh, the, you can change the orientation for, for each of these uh, for, for each of these uh, points, and you will get these manifolds, the self-motions manifold that you see on on the right. On the axis of this plot, you have. Uh, Q1, the, the angles of, uh, of the joints, the Q1, Q2, and Q3 on the Z axis. And this is what we refer to as self-motion uh, manifolds for, for this um, first basic case. Well, in, in fact, we will focus on, on these other robots. This is a Nachi NZ04, which is a Japanese uh, a very uh, rec recently acquired uh, robot that we have in the lab. And this is the, the 3D model that we um, uh, did in, with since we wielded with Simscape in MATLAB. There you can see the Denavid and Hartenberg parameters for the Nachi, and also the joint limits, the, the, the uh, inferior and the lower and upper limits uh, for, each, uh, for each of the joints. So for, for finding the, uh, the self-motion manifolds for this robot, uh, we use a, a, a we, we formulate an optimization problem, and uh, with a specific uh, objectives, um, in order to determine the solution for each manifold. Uh, the number of functions uh, uh, there, uh, uh, of the objective function uh, usually are in conflict, and they are in, it's important uh, that are in conflict uh, to get many configurations. Uh, for a particular pose. So um, the optimization functions that we are using are those, uh, uh, the first one is the, manipul the well-known manipul manipulability, Yoshikawa's, Yoshikawa's manipulability index, uh, which is uh, typical for non-redundant robots. Uh, you, there you can see is that uh, you use the Jacobian and uh, use a norm of, uh, of the Jaco uh, Jacobian uh, for, for this, uh, a function for it's a, it's a index function, and um, also uh, we use uh, the second the, the second function is intended to uh, to the way to minimize that uh, the position of the the configuration of, uh, in in a particular for a particular solution to be. <clears throat> Closest to the middle of the range. I mean, they have to be far from the limits. In that in that equation, q sub i uh, to uh, a minus and plus are the limits, the lower and upper limits of, of the joints. So um, and the final the final um, objective function is this one, the two norm of the joint display displacement, which uh, in fact is uh, some kind of smoothness smoothness uh, function which uh, is a uh, smoothness and uh, energy related function. So, um, and you'll see for the case of, uh, for the case of uh, Nachi robot, 
of course, there are seas, six degrees of freedom, but when you are working on a surface, as I show here, we only constrain the end position. And the fact that the three uh, uh, axes, the three um, wrist axes, the, three, the, the, the upper uh, degrees of freedom, uh, they, uh, they are, um, they, 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 they find a, a common point. The fact that the orientation is free allows to only consider uh, the three uh, uh, Q4, Q5, and Q6. The, let's say the higher uh, joints uh, of, the, of the chain. And here you can see some of the result, results also for, for another case. Well, I'm going, I'm going to move a, a little faster because I see I don't have much time. Um, these are solutions for the Pareto front. Remember, we are using genetic algorithm to generate a Pareto front. And, and each of these fronts is uh, for, a different, uh, for, for different configurations. There you, I'm, I'm gonna uh, zoom in out so you can see that you have uh, uh, the, these uh, graphs are for the different, sorry, for the different objective functions. Here we have a comparison of uh, the, the solution found uh, using analytic analytic solution and using the more the genetic algorithm on the right and you see they ha they have the same shape we we in fact we got much more uh, solutions more more points and uh, we we could define clearly the, the manifolds for the Nachi we obtain uh, at the end uh, this uh, the self manifold for the three as I said. The three uh, upper uh, joints, uh, Q, Q4, Q5, and Q6. The, since they, I said the, the axis intersect, so it, it allows to control the orientation with only these three uh, axes, and the, uh, the orientation is no constraint. So the, these methods allow to explore the, all the global solution of the optimization problem. So um, we have shown that. With this approach, we can uh, evaluate the manifolds uh, of uh, even an industrial robot. I have, I know, don't have much time to the conclusion, but uh, we can. Uh, I, I, I let you ask any question and read the conclusions here. Uh, thank you for your uh, good presentation. Have any question, anybody? Uh, so I ask you one question. Um, uh, what is your recommendation for choice of point on Pareto optimal curve? Oh, okay, that's a that's a good question. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, those points are uh, some of them are uh, uh, provide a, a better. Uh, solution for the when you when it comes to energy order for uh, a, a smooth um, I mean for for manipulability uh, in fact it depends on the application what you are looking for um, in the, for what we're exploring here is the manifold so uh, we use the f3 for example to find the limits of the branches of the self motion so we we use those solutions uh, uh, of the Pareto prompt uh, to find the, the the limits of the branches of the self motion manifold. Thank you, uh, Evgeny Magid. Uh, have, uh, have a question, please uh, ask your question. Thank you for the talk. Uh, I have a very quick question. Uh, how about validation with a real robot? Uh, did you do it, or maybe I missed one of the slides okay. again? No, uh, we didn't do it. This we we only simulate um, the motion and the, all the the possible solutions, and uh, uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's one of the future uh, work that we would like to to do. Thank you for so the question. In, mm -hmm. in your lab, you have this physical robot, right? Yes, exactly. We have a, okay. a, a new, quite new one. Yeah, thank you. 
okay, it means nothing will stop you from making validations finally, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Okay. We can do it easy. Uh, uh, thank you, Patrick. Well, uh, one Reese, uh want to ask a question, please. Yeah. Um, hello. So first of all, thanks for this nice presentation. Um, I would like to ask about your uh, secondary optimization goal of uh, taking all the joints in the middle of the ranges. Um, do you think this is better than trying to keep the joints, uh, let's say, close to the former position while moving as a secondary optimization to uh, get this uh, yeah, over actuation uh, solved? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. In fact, we already tried that one in another uh, work. And uh, uh, just as an option uh, for, for both men and uh, for uh, not to come into, uh, uh, when you are planning, not to come into a solution that is far from the, the one, uh, the previous one. But uh, in this case, is what we are looking for uh, uh, how to build these uh, manifolds in a, a, you know, to explore the whole space. It, it turns out that uh, uh, using these uh, functions, uh, we would get uh, better results. Uh, uh, we get more points uh, uh, from the Pareto front, front, and we could relate it to the different branches easily. Thank you. Okay, for thanks for this uh, answer, yeah. And nice to hear that you already tried this out, my question. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you.